Hello friends, hello, hello, hello. My name is Jessica Hamas and I am a beauty influencer here on Facebook. I love to come on here and inspire and empower other people to live their very best life while staying true and authentic to themselves and not caring what other people think. I also feel that we should embrace our beauty not only on the outside, but on the inside, our personality, our characteristics, our flaws, our strengths. We are all beautiful. We are all very unique in our own way. And today we are going to talk about a different topic that I normally don't talk about, but is very, very common. And it's anxiety okay so feel free to send this out to your friends because today's is gonna be great so if you're here live put a one in the comments if you're watching the playback drop a two and of course if you are brand new to me here drop a three in the comments okay so anxiety let me tell you a little bit about myself okay earlier this week I had somebody tell me there's no way that you can control anxiety. And I highly disagree with that. I highly disagree with that. And so I did a poll, kind of, um, the other day asking, do you believe, one, that you can control anxiety, or two, you can't control anxiety? And it was very interesting because this is an important topic, you know, very, very important topic. Anxiety... Okay, anxiety tends to pop up in our life when we feel that we have absolutely no control. Okay, it pops up when we have no control in that very moment or there are many different unknowns. Freya, you need to turn that down, please. Um, I have personally had a life coach for a couple of years because... I had a moment in my life that I really needed help. And my friend, my life coach, her name is Samantha Boyd, um, she helped me tremendously, okay, during that time. And with anxiety, when we recenter, when we recenter and see that we can actually control look to see what we can control in those moments and bring ourselves back to a calmer state, then we're actually able to control our anxieties that hit us. And in all honesty, I'm going to be very honest and you may not agree with me and that is okay, okay? Anxiety has a lot to do with this right here. Anxiety is a state of lack of control when you feel like you're lacking control you spin out you have anxiety attacks known as panic attacks you have triggers that trigger that during those times it is so important for you to stop and think of a few questions what is causing me to feel this way right now what may have triggered this response? Is there something here that I can control right now? I'm going to tell you that anxiety is normal. Everybody has anxiety. But you can learn how to control that anxiety and it has to do with your mind. When you have anxiety that spins out of control, you can easily go from having healthy anxiety to unhealthy anxiety of pushing over that line, over that limit into anxiety disorders. I will tell you right now, I have an anxiety disorder. I have depression. I'm also obsessive compulsive. I have a few different actual anxiety disorders, but I have learned how I am able to help control that. Everybody's situation is very different. What I'm saying when you have anxiety, 
you can find a way to control it so it does not, number one, hinder relationships, and number two, stop you from being able to live a life. If it gets to those points, I urge you, I urge you to get some professional help, okay? Every person is different, but once you start actually working within yourself and understanding where the feelings of those anxieties are coming, what, what's triggering those anxieties, you actually can start to become more at peace and free with yourself. But I'm going to tell you this right now. Are you willing to put in that work? There are many people out there that are not willing to put in that work to work on themselves and work on that anxiety. And if you're not at that point in life, that's okay. I don't want you to think that it's wrong because it's not. You may not be in the position at this particular moment in life to where you can control anxiety. There are times that we have to live through those moments of anxiety to be able to learn from them, learn what those triggers are, and then be able to start helping ourselves. You guys, I have had years, years of counseling, okay? A little bit about me. I am a sexual abuse survivor. I won't go specifically into the details, but it was basically when I was very young, age three to five, okay? In the very time of my life that I learned many things. You know what I mean? Those first few years of life is where you start learning about life. I've had a lot of mental trauma because of sexual abuse. I have had to live through so much control and so much manipulation. I have been taught, I was taught to live in fear. A lot of emotional trauma. So I have been through a lot of counseling to be able to work with that. You know, if, if you are not a sexual abuse survivor, you would not fully understand everything that a person goes through mentally, physically, psychologically, emotionally, and even spiritually. So I've been through a lot and it's not easy. I understand that it's not easy. Anxiety is not easy. Depression is not easy. And most of the time, anxiety and depression, they go together. But anxiety, you guys, is normal, okay? Anxiety, it can help you stay alert. It can help you staying focused. It can help you move into action and it can help you also motivate to solve problems. But when it's a constant and overwhelming feeling of anxiousness, it interferes in your relationships, it interferes into your daily life, that's when it becomes no longer healthy anxiety and it crosses that line into anxiety disorders. Anxiety disorders, I don't know if you know this, is among the most common mental health issue and it is treatable. There are things that you can do for yourself and also get professional assistance and help. Once you understand, once you are able to understand your anxiety, there are steps that you can do to reduce the symptoms and gain control of your life. Anxiety attacks, those are known as panic attacks, okay? 
Those episodes of intense fear or panic occur very suddenly and just without warning, without any warning, complete, out of the blue. I will be honest, I have not experienced anxiety attacks slash panic attacks because of the same thing. I've not experienced them. I cannot put myself in somebody's shoes that have. Is it uncommon to have panic attacks? Not necessarily. It's not. I want you to know that you are not alone when it comes to anxiety and when it comes to depression. But there is a way that you can learn how to control anxiety. And that's by understanding and being more in tune with yourself. And it takes a lot of work. It's not just something that's going to happen overnight. It's taken me 20 plus years to get where I'm at. And sometimes there's triggers. Okay. For example, maybe you're claustrophobic getting into an elevator and it gets stuck would you have a panic attack yeah you would if you're claustrophobic you would have a panic attack maybe you have this huge fear of getting up and speaking with somebody but you're challenging yourself and you're getting ready to have a big speech guess what you're probably going to be a little anxious that's okay but in other cases panic attacks can happen like that and if it's constantly controlling your life to where you can't function, that's where you need assistance. And I love that we have professional help out there to help us. Okay? For myself, okay? For myself, I'm going to tell you how I have been able to help myself through anxiety and help control it. I... After I had kids, I noticed that my anxiety got worse. Any parent out there who, who doesn't have anxiety, <laughs> drop a heart in the comments if you don't have anxiety and you have children, because I don't think that's possible, in all honesty, um, because we worry about our kids. But I found that my anxiety became even more after having kids. Even more when I found that one of my children has ADHD and, ops and oppositional defiant disorder, emotional disturbances, and social disturbances, okay? I didn't know how to deal with that. I would get so frustrated that I was throwing things at my children because they pissed me off because I couldn't understand what was going on in their brains. At that point, I knew I needed help. I got professional help because I said, look, I'm at the point where I'm going to t tie my child to a wall. I'll tie her to a chair or throw her against the wall. I was at that point and I said, I know I need help. And it took me a very long time to get to that point. Even though I'm a medical professional, it still took me quite some time to get to that point to realize that I needed help. Maybe you're not at that point where you need help. Maybe you don't realize that maybe you need help. But when you do actually realize it and you make that step, I want to give you some kudos, okay? Because that's not easy to come to that decision. So I take an anxiety medication called Zoloft. I do. I am not ashamed about it. And I don't want you to be ashamed about it either if you are on a medication to help your anxiety. I also drink specific products and also take supplements with Elevosity. One of my friends, she is a um, 
a direct seller of Elevosity and I absolutely love it because number one, it has helped my moods. It has helped balance the serotonin and the dopamine in my brain that causes issues with anxiety and depression. It also helps suppress and control my appetite where many of you know that I've just started exercising and getting my health back and I've dropped seven pounds. That's huge. That is huge for me. It also gives me extreme energy, which is exactly what I need. So that is another way that I help control my anxiety. I do meditation. Meditation is so important. Meditation can happen just by going for a walk and just watching and looking at your surroundings and enjoying being outdoors, enjoying the sun, enjoying seeing the birds, listening to the birds. Maybe you like to take a walk at night and you're hearing all of the night creatures, okay? Crickets, frogs, wherever you live. I have some apps that I use that I will put in the comments of this video. I have one that's called Calm. I have one that's called A Soft Murmur. I have one that's called Mindfulness. When I got professional help, I was told about that specific app, Mindfulness, and also CBT-iCoach. I listen to podcasts to lift my energy and lift my and to lift my mood, which helps with anxiety. I also listen to I also listen to music. And I have a motivational um, playlist on YouTube that whenever I'm feeling anxious or something, I go to and listen to because it gets me fired up. And then I forget about it. Okay. So there is some self-help for anxiety, some tips, okay? Not everyone who worries a lot actually has an anxiety order. You may be feeling anxious because maybe you have a very demanding schedule. Maybe you're not exercising or maybe you're not getting enough sleep. Maybe you have a lot of pressure at home, at work. Maybe you have too much caffeine. The bottom line is if your life is unhealthy and stressful, you are going to feel more anxious. So here are some tips, okay? Number one tip, connect with others. Loneliness and isolation actually triggers anxiety and brings it up even higher, okay? So meet up with friends. I know we can't really meet up with a whole lot of friends, but you can meet up somewhere and be six feet away from each other and still have a good time. Share your worries and concerns with someone who you trust. Build, build new relationships. Find a supportive network. Okay? You can also join self-help groups or support groups. I have those on Facebook to where I can go and very supportive. Okay? The second thing, you've got to learn to manage your stress. <laughs> if there are managing stress techniques out there. You can Google that. But if you have a lot of stress in your life, you've got to get that stress under control because then that will help with your anxiety. Look at the responsibilities that you have. See if it's something that you can let go. See if it's something that you can say no to or that you can delegate, delegate to somebody, okay? Practice relaxation techniques. This is a really, really good one, okay? I actually learned this. Um, when I was at a foundation that helped me with coping, coping mechanisms and just learning how to really heal and become a warrior of my past and not letting it control who I was, but to move on and understand that part of my life, my past is part of me, but it's not something that has to control me and define my life and that was something that I learned but practicing relaxation techniques when you do this regularly it will help with anxiety so we're talking about mindfulness we're talking about meditation okay we're talking about progressive muscle relaxation relaxation like really tense up your muscles and then relax them do that two or three times 
and then relax them. That helps release anxiety. Deep breathing. I'm not saying, mm, no, we don't have to do that. But just sit there with your eyes closed. Have on some nice, soft music and just do some deep breathing. That can really help calm you and bring your anxiety down. Exercise re regularly. <laughs> Exercise is actually a natural stress buster and an anxiety reliever. Go out for a walk. That's what I've been doing. I have been going out for a walk two to three times a week. Go running. Swimming. Martial arts. I love martial arts and I, I'm going to get back into that someday. <laughs> um, dancing. Okay. Another one, get enough sleep. When we don't get enough sleep, our anxiety goes up. It's really, really important to try to get seven to nine hours of good quality sleep because it will help bring that down, that anxiety. Be smart about your caffeine, alcohol, and nicotine, okay? Caffeine, it's going to raise your anxiety. Alcohol does the same thing, okay? Nicotine, it may... It may be relaxing for you, but it also does take up anxiety, okay? Now, if your worries, if your fears, if your anxiety attacks have become so great that it's causing extreme distress or disrupting your daily routine, it is really important to seek professional help, okay? So I, I hope that this, this live today has been beneficial for you. I really hope that some of these tips are tips that you will be able to start incorporating into your life to be able to really help with your anxiety and getting your anxiety under control and having that ability. So until my next video, stay true to yourself, be authentic, be genuine, show love to others, and of course, be kind. And I'll talk to you later. Toodles!